Ricardo with Cobla with another Black History Moment. Um, sorry we haven't been getting them on on the daily. We're going to have to double up because Facebook has been shutting uh, a couple of them down uh, with their new algorithm. So um, let's get started. Today we'll talk about a black man who came west on the old Oregon Trail from Missouri with his family at the turn of the 20th century. Born in 1890 in St. Mary's, Kansas, George Fletcher's family settled in Pendleton, Oregon. This is an interesting choice because throughout the second half of the 19th century, the growth of Oregon's black population was limited by local and statewide exclusionary policies and a reluctance to grant racial minorities civil rights. So as a result, there were barely more than a thousand blacks in the state of Oregon at the time. Even smaller was the number of African Americans who lived in rural areas. In 1870, 44% of the black population lived in Portland. By 1900, that number had changed to over 70%. The isolation of rural Oregon, where anti-black sentiments were strongest, could be dangerous, and the few blacks who lived outside cities mostly worked as tradesmen or servants uh, to white families. So George Fletcher liked to spend a lot of his time with the local Native Americans on the Umatilla uh, Native Reservation, that's in Eastern Oregon. Uh, the tribes treated Fletcher like family, uh, which is the exact opposite of the treatment he received uh, in town with whites. So on the reservation, he learned about the tribe's culture, he learned their language, but most importantly, uh, he learned their horsemanship. And this is something the federal government did not want Native Americans to practice on the reservation because the government believed at that time indigenous tribes should be assimilated to white culture. So in 1911, Fletcher competed in the now infamous, what they call the Pendleton Roundup. Uh, and in the finals, he competed against a man named John Spain, who was white. Uh, Fletcher's final run was so amazing, uh, the crowd screamed his name. Uh, but the judges controversially awarded Spain the first prize. Uh, angry at the final results, someone in the crowd snatched Fletcher's hat off of his head, uh, cut it into pieces, and with each person who took a piece of the hat uh, would donate $5. So by the time uh, they collected this money and, and gave Fletcher a different hat to replace the one they they obviously torn up. Uh, the attendees of the rodeo stuffed $700 uh, in cash into it. Uh, and that $700 is actually twice the, the value of the saddle uh, given to the first place winner, uh, Mr. Spain, that year. Uh, and to give you another idea of how much $700 was at that time, that's right around $18,000 today. Um, so in a finish that was kind of like a movie, really, um, they hoisted Fletcher on top of their shoulders, declared him the people's champion. What captured and what's really interesting about uh, George Fletcher is uh, why he was so popular, right? This is a time when uh, anti-black laws were in full effect. So why did people who were not black or white people um, really yell and root for somebody of a different color in that time? Uh, and it was because of his flamboyance. They say uh, that he would wear like bright orange chaps and that uh, he rode Broncos, uh, he Bronco busted cool. It always looked like he could fall off at every sec, any second. So that's what, what really made him uh, interesting to everybody. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Fletcher never competed again 
because of the injury sustained to him in World War I. Uh, and he did live and reside in Pendleton until his death in 1973. A bronze sculpture was, in his honor, was unveiled in Pendleton uh, in 2014. Uh, and this is really significant, you guys, because uh, shortly after uh, the 1910s proved to be a short-lived era for diversity in the Roundup, as time passed, Rodeo's culture association with the image of the white male cowboy grew stronger alongside the resurgence of anti-black race, uh, anti racism in Oregon again during the 1920s and the increasing urbanization of the black population, there was a sharp decline in the number of black rodeo competitors. Uh, there has been no mention or evidence of black competitors at the Pendleton after 1920 as far as I could find. So there it is, another black history moment brought to you by Cobla for you, for me, for we. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tomorrow, we'll try to double up and catch back up. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a great night.